Welcome to the lecture Python for NetCDF. Today I'm going to talk about how you can use Python to read the data out of a NetCDF file. To install NetCDF4 for Python, it involves a few steps. For example, you need to install ZLib for data compression. And because NetCDF4 is built on top of HDF5, so you need to install HDF5 first. And of course, you need to make sure that you have NetCDF installed. And finally, you need to install a NetCDF for Python extension. Detailed instructions about how to install the NetCDF extension of Python can be found from the website. So please go check it out and install that on your computer. I'm going to talk about how to use Python to retrieve the most essential information about a dataset. For example, the dimensions, the variables, and the information related to the variables. I'm not going to talk about how do you handle data file that has groups or compound data. Uh, they belong to the enhanced NetCDF data model. If you're interested, you can go check out the documentation on NetCDF4 to get more information. However, the information you're going to be able to retrieve from the instruction I give you in this video will apply to both the classic and the enhanced data set. They are the most essential information uh, related to the data. To give you an overview, basically, you need to import the package NetCDF4, uh, in particular, the dataset extension. Loading NetCDF data is actually pretty straightforward. You only need one single line of code. Remember, the NetCDF file essentially contains multi-dimensional arrays, so you always need to query the dimensions of the arrays. Also, the file can contain one or multiple variables, so you need to query the variables, including number of variables, the name of variables, and also the dimensions of those variables. And uh, you can also query the global attributes related to the file. And also, I'm going to show you how do you query attributes specific to each variable. Okay, now let's see how you can read information from a NetCDF file using Python. Assuming you have a file uh, with the data name in the box. Now to open the file, you can just call dataset and you return the result to a variable named root. Remember using Python, you don't have to declare the variable. It's dynamic typed, so you can just assign the result to a variable that you choose. Here I use root. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to read out the dimensions because you got to know the length of dimensions so that you can um, have an idea the size of the array. So we already have a file open under the name root. Now I'm going to assign the particular field dimensions to another variable called dims. Dims is actually a, a dictionary that will give you the name of the dimensions and also the length that you're going to need. So first of all, I'm going to figure out how many components are in this in this dictionary, meaning what's the number of dimensions in the data set. So I will call a function len and it will return me an integer. This integer I will assign to n dims and that tells me how many dimensions are in the data set. Then I'm going to query the length of individual dimension. So I'm going to use a for loop because dims is a dictionary, so I can use a key to query the information corresponding to each dimension. So I'm going to loop through each of the key using for key in dims comment. And then over here, the dims with the key will return you the value, which is the value related to this dimension. And then you call a function called len, L-E-N, then you will get the length of that particular dimension. So the button shows a screenshot of the output from the code segment above. Okay, now let's look at how do you query global attributes. Remember global attributes are the information related to the data set. So to do that, first of all, remember we already have a file open called root. Then I'm going to query uh, using nc attributes to get attributes out from the data set and then assign to the variable called g attributes representing global attributes. Now this g attributes is actually also a dictionary. So you all the information related to the global file 
uh, is stored in this dictionary because a file can have multiple attributes. So first thing I want to do is I want to see how many attributes are stored for this global file. So I will call a function called len g attributes that will return me the number of components in the dictionary, just like what I did for the dimensions. Now I will get this value and assign to n that is number of global attributes, ng attributes. Each component of the global attribute represents a particular type of attributes. I'm going to loop through the keys in the this global attribute dictionary. Very similar to what I did for the dimensions, I will have a loop for key in g attributes. This is actually the way uh, you commonly use to loop through different components in a dictionary. So here, for each iteration, key is going to assign a key for a particular component of the g attribute variable. So now, how do you actually get attributes? So I'm going to call this function get attribute, g t a t t r here in the red box, and I will provide the object, which is the data file object root, with the key, and then this get attribute function is going to return me the information about that particular attributes. So the bottom is a snapshot from running this code segments. You can see the data set I'm using has 13 global attributes, title, institution, source, contact, etc. You can see they are related to the file. Now let me show you how the query information relates to the variables, which are the most important part of data. You are going to use the field variables to get a dictionary and assign the dictionary to the variable called vars here. So this dictionary contains all the variables that are stored in the data set. Here I'm going to query first of all how many variables are in the data set using the function len. This is the function we used earlier to query the number of a component in a dictionary. So the results are assigned to the variable nvars, which is the number of variables in a data set. I need to query this is because a net CDF file can contain one or multiple variables. I want to get information specific to each of the variables. So I'm going to loop through the dictionary vars using the for loop here, where the var again is the key. So here I am showing you how do you get the dimensions of each variable. A variable can define under a subset of dimensions, so you still need to query the shape, that is the dimensions for a specific variable. So here I use a key var, query into the dictionary vars, and then I use the field shape. Shape is going to give me the tuple that contains the dimensions of this particular variable. And also for the variable vars with the key var, I will get the dimension. The reason I am getting dimension is that I want to know the name of each dimension. So I will use this field dimensions and assign to vdims that will give me the information related to the current variable. This vdim represents the dimensions of the variable, which can have multiple components. It is a tuple. So I'm going to use a for loop to loop through each of the dimensions and I print out the length of that particular dimension. Okay, so I think the best way to understand the code here is to look at the output. So in the output here, I print out the shape, query by the dot shape field, which is 24 by 170 by 180. And also because I have for loop in the bottom of this code, so it will print out the name of the dimension and also the length of the dimension. So this information is particular to this particular variable, and here the output is specific to a variable called TOS. For each variable, there can be also some attributes associated with it. So to query the attributes, we are going to use the method ncAttributes, like the ncAttr method. 
This is very similar to the way we use to query the global information. So remember vars is a dictionary, and then the var here is a key in the dictionary that represents a variable. We call this method, which also is a dictionary, return back to v attribute here. You can use len to query the number attributes, and to get attribute, you call the function get attr, and you supply the variable queried from the dictionary, and also the key. So you can also slice the data. So the way you get the data from the variable is to uh, query the dictionary. Here var is the dictionary, and I give the key that represents the variable var, and then it is going to be array, then I can slice it. For example, here I will slice from one to three, and I assign it to variable A. And this is the output. Okay, this concludes the overview for using Python to access NetSeed data. I hope you find it useful.